Charmaine Vega, also known as Mama Vega. And today's demonstration is going to be on how to make a stuffing that is gluten-free. Um, I've had several people to contact me asking me if I would find a recipe or give them a recipe that was healthy, had fiber, but it also was gluten-free. So I said, okay, I would give it a shot. And I had not made this before, so I decided I was gonna come up with something that I thought would taste good, and I happened to be eating um, some of the ingredients here, and I was like, oh, I wonder how that would taste or how this would taste, and that's what made me come up with the idea of the ingredients that I'm actually going to be um, putting together to make this. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna tell you what those ingredients are and how much I'm going to do or the, in, the quantities that I'm going to be using of each one or so I think, because as you get started, if you know a lot about cooking, you get started and then you look at something or you taste it and you say, you know, I need to add a little bit more of this or that to it and I wanna not add so much of this. So this is what I've come up with that I'm going to start with and as we go, I may end up changing the recipe but at the end of the presentation or my demonstration, I will actually have the actual recipe typed out for you because then I would have figured it out, right? Because you would have been watching and we would have figured it out together in reality. So the first thing I have is I have Italian seasoning here and I have one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. I have a half a tablespoon of poultry seasoning. And the reason I have that is because a lot of people like to use this as stuffing to go with a turkey, which is why I chose that. You don't necessarily have to do turkey um, poultry seasoning. You can use another seasoning that would give it more of a beef flavor or something along those lines. And how you would accomplish that is with whatever broth you're using. This happens to be a vegetable broth that I'm doing because I'm making this where it's going to be vegetarian as opposed to plant-based or vegan or where it's gonna be meat-based. So I'm using this to give you the illusion that you have it as a turkey flavor, but you are actually not getting all the turkey drippings and all that to go into it, which I would normally do if that's what I was making for someone. I also have my um, fresh rosemary. I have very generous and gracious neighbors who have a lot of different herbs and spices. So I can get my herbs and spices very fresh, just call them up. Sometimes I just find it at my doorstep because they'll say, you know, I had an overabundance and I know you're cooking all the time, so here you go. So I do have some fresh rosemary and it smells mm, delicious. I just love that smell. And that will help to give the aroma and the feel and the flavoring when a person is eating it that you do have that turkey flavor even if you don't have meat when you actually serve the stuffing it will give that illusion i also have bay leaves here which i'm going to be using the bay leaves to actually soak my oat uh, groats which are right here and um, i also have some sage so i will be using some sage that also helps to do it this is dried mm, that smells really good too I have approximately two cups here of chopped kale. I have two celery stalks, and I have over here a half a cup of uh, dehydrated cranberries. I have one onion. I have a bell pepper, but because this bell pepper is so large, I don't think I'm gonna use the whole thing. I'll probably use just half of it. I have two and a half cups of vegetable broth. Um, that that's you know and you can see here that I have the two cups here and then a half a cup over here and then I also have ghee and ghee is clarified butter and what you do is you take the butter and you cook it down till you cook all of the fats off of it pretty much and the protein so it doesn't have any casein it's gluten free it's casein free and this one doesn't have any added salt either <clears throat> excuse me so this one is um, salt free as well so that's not going to bother anybody you can add however much salt you need as you're going along and you taste it and you decide you want to have some more salt um, I have the this right here is a quarter of a cup of oat groats which is the whole kernel of oats for the seed and then this is the kernels here that have been chopped up which is what we call steel cut because it's cut with the steel and then this is rolled oats, which is old fashioned oats or rolled oats depends. And these are gluten free as well. Um, you will see on the bag of these when you buy them or in the, if you buy them in bulk, it'll say gluten free. If it doesn't say gluten free, 
that means it may have been made in a facility or on a conveyor belt or in a processing facility that does have things that are not gluten-free. So it won't say gluten-free. Although generally speaking, most oats are gluten-free, but it may not say that. So you want to make sure that if you need gluten-free oats, then what you want to do is look on the bag and it will say gluten-free. So these are gluten-free because it says that. And the ghee, the reason I'm using that is because people for their um, stuffing oftentimes like to have that buttery flavor. So this will give you the buttery flavor without the casein that some people are allergic to and react to when they say they have a lactose intolerance. So that's why I'm choosing to do that. And I will end up showing you a close-up of all of the ingredients here so you can see exactly what everything looks like. And the first thing I would end up doing or getting when I get started is I'm going to take the two and a half cups of the broth, whatever broth you want to use, and I'm going to soak the oat kernels because they're, they're hard right now. So you want to soften them up because these all cook at different rates. So I start with soaking this and this will soak for about an hour, but I will also put in the water. I will put the bay leaves in the water. I will put this chopped up sage and I will also put chopped up um, the uh, rosemary. And that way the oils and things that are in here will start soaking into this because this is the one that takes the longest in order to cook. But by me soaking it and soaking it with those things, and I'll probably put a little bit of the seasonings in the water because that's going to help it mature and actually um, soak in. But that's what I will do. And that would be the only thing I would add is a little bit of the seasonings a little bit of this, um, these spices over here, the herbs, I should say, and then the groats that are here. I'll add that to the broth and let that soak for about an hour, okay? Okay, as promised, let's go through our ingredients that we have here so that you know exactly what it is. Right here, I have one tablespoon this right here is the one tablespoon see that one tablespoon of Italian seasoning I then have one half of a tablespoon right here of poultry seasoning and as I explained this is to give it more of that chicken turkey flavoring I have fresh rosemary which is right here. You can see how nice and bendable it is. So that tells you it's very fresh. I have that. I have my bay leaves that I'm going to be using. And I also have my sage. And these will be, the, the rosemary and the sage will be chopped up. The bay leaf, I will leave it as a whole leaf. I have two cups right here of chopped kale. And this is the curly kale that I'm using. I have one whole onion and that will be chopped up. I will have some that are chopped in bigger pieces and some in smaller pieces. What I did forget to put out here and I will be adding and that is garlic. I will also have some uh, minced garlic that and I don't have it here but I will do probably at least a tablespoon and this is what a tablespoon will look like so that'll be filled and that will have one tablespoon of garlic. And then I have over here I have one red bell pepper, but I'll probably use half of it and I will chop it up into pieces. And that's to give it a little bit of color because with this being a vitamin C, with me cooking it, it will diminish the amount of vitamin C that's going to come from this, but we can always serve it and then um, top it with a little bit. This is the ghee that I mentioned, and it has a lot of health benefits to it as well. And we'll be talking about that in another video but we have the ghee here, which is also considered clarified butter. I have the groats, which are here, and this is the whole oat is what that is. These are the steel cut, and you can see that they've been cut down into little pieces, so we have that, which is the whole one, and I didn't show you a close-up of the whole ones, but you can see this is what the whole ones look like. You can see they look a little bit like brown rice. Um, and these are gluten-free and these are the rolled oats which is what you see most people eating most of the time these are the rolled ones and they're flattened out and over here we have two and a half cups of vegetable broth and I will be using that and then I also have 
two celery stalks. So the only thing that I have missing here is my actual garlic. I may have a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, but we'll decide that as we go along if I will add that or not, which is why you don't see it here. But definitely I will be adding the garlic to this. And just so that you can see the garlic as a close up, here's the garlic. And this is one tablespoon, a little bit more than a tablespoon because it's, I'll just say it's a one heaping tablespoon. And that's because I love garlic. So you can see the garlic that's here. So I will be adding the garlic to it as well. This is the garlic I have and it's minced garlic. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the soaking process. So I'm going to add the half a cup of the broth. That's the first thing I'm going to add. And then now this is the two cups. So now we have a total of two and a half cups of the broth. And then the next thing I will add is I'm going to add the rosemary to it. And these are special herb scissors. You can see it has all these blades and stuff in it. And that allows you to cut the herbs so that they're nice and tiny without you having to chop it. So it saves you some time here. So I'm cutting those up. And that's going to be where I'm doing that. And that's coming really, really good there. So you can see how that is. Got that going all nice. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of the sage. I'll take a little bit of the sage and I will add that. You know, see that cuts up really nicely. And that's my bay leaves. I almost cut my bay leaf. So I'm going to put my bay leaf in. I'm going to cut some of the sage up here so that that's cut up. Here's my other bay leaf. Then here's another one. And here's a little bit more sage. Whoops. Almost got my finger in that one. So I'm going to cut that one up. And then I'll cut this one up over here. And then I'll try to get whatever is left in there and shake it out. The rosemary has a little bit of oil in it. So um, when I cut the dry stuff, it helps to get the rest of it out of there. So I'll get those out. The rest of that. Okay, so now we have that. Now I'm going to add, this is a little bit of the, um, I don't know what that was. Oh, it's hard is what it is so this now is my poultry seasoning so I'm going to add a little bit of the poultry seasoning in here and then I'm going to add some of the Italian seasoning as well because this gives it the flavoring I'm going to take one of my little so this is a half a teaspoon so I'll take a half, half a teaspoon of the garlic and I'll add that in and now I'm going to add the quarter cup of the groats to it and then we're going to let that um, I'm going to turn it on so it will simmer and then after it starts to simmer I'm going to turn it down and just let it soak I'm not going to cook it I'm just want to bring the temperature up so that it's a little bit hot so that what it'll do it, it will help everything to merge into the cell itself so but then I'll cover it let it sit for at least an hour before I turn it back on to actually start it to cook because now it would have softened it up a bit okay I'm letting you see that what I did is I put the spices in there and then I'm bringing it to a boil and now that it's boiling I'm going to actually turn it off and then I'm going to cover it and let it sit for about an hour Okay, while the uh, groats are actually soaking, which is approximately one hour, like I said a moment ago, I'm going to start on the vegetables by sauteing them. And I'm going to saute them, oops, wrong burner. I'm going to saute them in the uh, ghee. So I'm going to scoop out some of the ghee 
and I'll put probably about one tablespoon is what I'll put in there and it's going to start melting just like you would you know butter so I'm going to put that in so this will end up being approximately equal to like one tablespoon and then what I'll do is I will add some of the seasonings to it I'll add some of the all of the garlic as a matter of fact I'm going to add all of the garlic to it and then I'm going to add the seasonings because I want the seasonings to mix in with this. I remember the amount that I have here is a tablespoon. This is one tablespoon of this, but I'm not going to use it all. You see how I'm putting it in. But I wanted to really marinate in with the oil and the heat from the, the ghee, rather, is going to allow it to be able to draw out the natural oils that's in it. And then I'm going to add the poultry seasoning. So I'm doing this so that this will mix in and it's going to be nice and and it will add flavoring to the ghee. So we'll turn this down a little bit because we don't want it up too high. So I'm turning that down and then what I'm doing is I'm going to stir this around so you'll see. And by mixing this in like this, this will end up allowing the oils to be pulled out of the herbs. So now you have the ghee mixing in with this and then it's going to pull the oils out. So now I'll turn it back up a little so now that it stops so just a little bit. We just want it a little bit. Now, and what I ended up doing is rather than the full onion, I only did a half of the onion. So this was only half of that large onion that I had. So this is just half of that. So I'm going to take this. See how nicely that's looking? It's looking really nice. You can see it's all mixing in. And now that I have this mixed in, I'm going to turn around. And then this with the two stalks of celery. So I'm going to add the stalks of celery to it. And then I'm going to mix this in. So now we're going to have all of this mixed in as well. And because this has a lot of water in it naturally these you know you know have onions have water in it and then the celery has water in it what I will do at this point is now that it's all mixed in and you can see it glistens a little so you can see you can see how it's glistening see how that glistens that shows that everything is covered everything now is covered with the ghee so it's going to help to pull the ingredients and the seasonings into the onions and into the celery. It's going to help it to pull it in from the heat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it and I'm just going to spread it out like this and then I will cover it and let the, the natural oils and everything cook together in that before I add the kale. So I'm going to turn this down on low so that now this will be able to... Uh... Okay. The onions have now sauteed, and you see how they've cooked down? You see how that's all cooked down? And it may look like it's a little bit oily, but now it's all marinated in. It's not. What's going to happen is when I start adding more things, it's going to absorb the oil. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the kale to it. So I'm going to add the kale that I had, and that was the two cups of kale, so I'm adding that to it. And I'm going to stir that in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also add some broth to this because you can see it it did cook it. The, the garlic and onions and celery look really good. 
but what I want to do now is I'm going to add a cup of vegetable broth and that's going to help it now steam as well. So I'm mixing this all in so that it gets a nice coating. You see I want to mash it in there so that it gets the oil on it too. So where it was dry, it has all of this. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this now, because we want the, this to, to cook. We want the kale to now cook in. Okay, so I'll turn around and now I'm going to add, this is one cup of vegetable broth. So I'm adding the vegetable broth to this. And then I'll bring this up to a simmer. Okay, doesn't that look good? So I'm going to bring that up to a simmer. And now I'll turn it up. I'll turn it back up like really, really high. So now you see it's starting to bubble even more. And once it gets up to like a roaring bubble, but you see that's what's happening. You see all these bubbles over here? Now well, that's coming up to a roaring bubble. You want to bring that up to a roaring bubble because you want the heat to come up now. And then between the the ghee, which is the oil, you know, the ghee, it's going to help bring all these other things together with it. And it's going to give it that nice flavor. So now we have that going on. And then now that it's roaring, I'm going to end up turning it down. I'll cover it and let it continue to cook. Okay, now I'm going to go back over to the oat um, groats that, that I had and to the other burner because you can see my spatula is here. So this one is on the other burner and I'm turning it on now, but I want to show you by me letting them sit and soak. I'm going to show you what that looks like and you're going to see how they looked before. And this is just the groats. You see now how they've plumped up. You see how it's no longer... You know, you can still see the way that they are, but you can see the way it's like plumped up. You know, it's plumped up quite a bit. See how that is? See how that's all plumped up? So now, I've turned that up, and we've got the groats in here. And you see we have all the seasonings. You can see the seasonings that I put in there. You can see all of that. And now what I'll do is I will add the steel cut. So now I'm going to add the steel cut to it. So we're going to stir the, whoops, the steel cut in with that. Okay, so now i got the steel cut that's mixed in with that. Okay. So we're going to now let the steel cut start cooking, because that won't take as long as the other ones, because you can see that they've plumped up now, so they're kind of, you know, soft. You can see, you see the steel cut that's mixed in with it. See, you can see how they're mixed in together. So you can see how those are mixed in there. So I'm going to now bring this to a boil, like a rapid rapid boil. And once this comes to a rapid boil, then I'll turn this one down. And then we'll let this cook. And then we'll end up adding to this. We will add another um, the rolled oats to it. And we'll see how it looks and then we'll put everything together and then we'll have our stuffing. I want you to see that I've lowered it to a simmer so it's lowered down to a simmer and then I'm going to cover it and let it keep cooking. Okay so the steel cut has been added and you can see how thick that is now. When you look at it you can see this is very thick. So obviously that's not going to be enough um, broth in here to absorb me adding the rolled oats. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add in some broth. So I'm going to pour in some broth right here and stir that in. That's one more cup. So I added a cup of the broth here. So now you see where I've added that. You can see now how that's more loose. Remember, the, when I add the vegetables, they have some water in them, or some broth, I should say. So now what I can do is I can add in the um, rolled oats. So I'm going to add these in and let this start cooking. So now we're going to have the rolled oats 
is added into this. I'm gonna try to get them all in there to make sure that they all cook down. So now that's in it. You see that this is still watery. You see how watery that is? So now with these oats, it's gonna absorb that one cup that I just put in. So we're gonna let this now. I'll bring this back to a simmer. It'll come back up to a simmer and then I'll lower it back down. And I will then, after this cooks, then what we're gonna do is mix in the other vegetables. Okay, now I'm back over to the vegetables, which is the kale, celery, onions, and garlic. No salt, no pepper. But what I did do is I tasted it. I like how it tastes, but I wanted a little bit, another note in there. So what I'm going to add is I'm going to add a little bit of cumin. So I'm going to put a little bit of cumin in because I happen to like cumin and I like how it'll taste when I add the cumin into it. So I'm going to mix that in. And by the way, I did take, taste the oats and the oats taste really good. So by the time I add this in, it's going to be really delicious and scrumptious. So I'm going to add this in and I'm going to let this cook in with this just a little bit. It was good, but I just wanted a little bit more of another flavoring in here to give it that added little something. It was just some little note or something that was missing that I wanted. And you see how it's also turned a little bit brownish color in there, which is what I wanted also. I wanted a little bit more brown flavor and brown coloring, and then I would know. So I'm gonna let that cook for a couple minutes, and I don't necessarily have to cover it because it's just gonna be a hot minute that I'm gonna let that cook in. And then I'll add it in with the oatmeal. Okay, now you can see how thick this is. You can see I've added all of it and it's thickened up very nicely. And it tastes delicious. All the flavoring did marinate in exactly the way I wanted it. So now what I'll do is I'm going to now take the vegetables and I'll add the vegetables to it. You see it has a little bit more juice in here, which is fine. And there we go. And then the other thing I will add to this is I didn't have fresh cranberries, but I did have some dehydrated ones, so I'm going to add that to it. And I'll break these up like this so that they're not all clumped together. I'll separate them. And then I will show you how that ends up looking. Okay, now this is the finished product and all I have to do now is put it on a plate and drizzle it with some gravy. Okay, I started adding some of the bell peppers in and I'm gonna add the remaining. I remember this was one half of a bell pepper. So I'm adding that in and you can see where it's giving it a nice rosy popping color to it. It'll also give it some texture because the bell peppers are not cooked, they're raw. So you're gonna have a little bit of a crunch in here to mix in with that. And you can see how that is. And I did make some gravy, so I have the gravy made as well. Okay, here's the finished stuffing. And the only thing that's left for me to do now is for me to pour the gravy on it. So I can drizzle it with the gravy. And then as the finishing touch, I can add a little rosemary on the side. And there you go, all finished. As you can see, I already started eating. Um, I did drop some off to my daughter in order for her to try and she told me to come back because she was in a meeting and I said, okay. So um, here's one of the little bay leaves that I have in mind. And I started eating it, so I ended up deciding I better get an appetizer fork because one, that will help me slow down and I can't eat as fast. 
And then two, it's like, um, gives me the illusion that I'm not eating as much since I've already started eating some. And the other plate that you saw, I dropped it off to her. But I would like to get some feedback from you. So if you think this was good, you liked it, you thought it was an excellent idea, um, I'd like for you to try it and then give me the feedback. Let me know how it worked for you because it may have worked differently for you than it worked for me. And like Mamba Vega always says, mount you on this. So bon appetit. And on the bottom of this, do like it, share it, give me comments, feedback, whether it's positive or ne negative. I'd like to hear what whatever that feedback is because I can always make improvements on something or maybe you have an idea of how I can change it, other ingredients whatever that might be. Again, thank you very much. This is like so good. That's why I got this little fork. You see this little fork? I don't know why, I'm just kind of like fooling myself, but I thought I would do it anyway, but it's delicious. You're really gonna like this one. This is so good. I'm not going to be on video. No, you're not going to be on video, but I want Is you... Is this the Mama Vega non-face video? Yeah, this is the Mama Vega non-face <laughs> video. Okay, so this is the non-face video. So you're going to... This is the non-face non video, video where you do the tasting, okay? You're going to yeah. do the tasting, okay? So go ahead and do your reveal. Mm. It's warm. It's a warm dish. like something in gravy. Vegetables in it. Are those peppers? Yes, red bell pepper. Okay. It also has kale. Kale and the oats. Mm-hmm. Onion? Yes. Okay. Let's try it. Since this is the non faced, hmm. How do I describe it? You can taste the onion well. The gravy's light, but it's flavorful. The oats don't taste like oats, it, it tastes like a Risotto. Like a stuffing, yeah, like a risotto. Yeah, it tastes like a risotto. It's not heavy, it's, it's, it's actually the whole thing is light. And there's a sort of, it's not pickled taste, but it's, it's gotta be the peppers, mm -hmm. right? What about the texture? Like yeah, it's mm -hmm. more, yeah. The texture is not coarse like oats it's not heavy or dense but it's like rice risotto I mean type of thing um with the flavor there's a sweetness to it as well that's probably the cranberries cranberries that's what I okay there's a sweetness to it I like it as a side dish or if it went with something else but it definitely could be a stuffing a different type of stuffing I like it is sweet and has salt sort of a, not, a, not a salty taste the contrast between sweet and like salt. savory savory yeah you get all that you taste all that in it that's very good and then the gravy mm -hmm. what, what, what's that the just? gravy is just gluten free and uh, vegetable broth there's a gluten free flour vegetable perfect, broth and it's, seasonings it's perfectly that's the right flavor and it's, um, it's not dry. It's good. I like it. Due to the fact that I have provided information that could potentially have health benefits as well as nutritional um, implications, I'm decided that I am including this disclaimer with all the information that I'm providing to you. And 
What I'm saying is the information contained in this presentation is meant to get you started connecting the dots. You can do more research on your own, just dig a little deeper and find out what works for you. That's what's important. It's what works for you as an individual. All information, content, and material of this presentation is for informational purposes only and are not intended to serve as a substitute for the consultation, diagnosis, and or medical treatment of your qualified physician or healthcare provider. The information contained in this presentation is compiled from a variety of sources and is not considered complete. Therefore, it is not meant to be a scientific analysis in any way, shape, or form. Information is subject to change without notice, and we see that on a daily basis, that what happens today can change tomorrow, can change next week. So what I'm providing here is what I know at the time that I'm making this. If you have a medical emergency, call your doctor or 911 immediately. And I wanna thank you for watching and bon appetit. And like Mama Vega always says, now chew on this. I want to present you with this information as well. All of the information that was presented here, I have written, narrated, videotaped, edited, and everything else. All the pictures contained in here are royalty free, including the video. The video is royalty free and it is owned by Charmaine Vega doing business at Mama Vega Enterprises. And Mama Vega as well as Now Chew on This are both registered trademarks of Mama Vega Enterprises. Thank you very much. Enjoy.